Excellencies President Ramaphosa and President Sanchez, it is my honor to request Minister Pando and Ambassador Robedro to sign the Memorandum of Understanding in the field of sports. Minister and Ambassador. Minister and Ambassador, may you please remain seated where you were. <laughs> <laughs> Your Excellencies, President Ramaphosa and President Sanchez, it is, my, it is again my honor to invite the Minister and Ambassador to sign the Memorandum of Understanding between the National Library of the Republic of South Africa and the Ambassador, you may now return to your seats. Your Excellencies, President Ramaphosa and President Sanchez, I have the honor to request Minister Patel and Ambassador Robredo to sign the Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation on the Field of Industry 4.0. Ministers, you may now return to your seats. We have come to the end of the signing ceremony. I would like to thank His Excellency President Ramaphosa and His Excellency President Sanchez for witnessing the beautiful ceremony. It is now my pleasure to hand over to Mr. Maguena to facilitate the press briefing. Mr. Maguena. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies will now kick off our media briefing, which will commence with brief remarks from President Ramaphosa, to be followed by uh, His Excellency President Sanchez,
Thereafter, we'll open the floor to questions, and we'll take three questions from Spain, and we'll take three questions from the South African media contingency. Your Excellency, President Ramaphosa. Thank you very much, and we'd like to welcome members of the media from the uh, siesta. Uh, welcome back here. Your Excellency, President Pedro Sanchez, ambassadors and ministers and officials and of course members of the media. It's been a real honor and a great pleasure to receive His Excellency President Sanchez and his delegation to South Africa. We have just concluded a very successful engagement which have been crowned by the signing of three memoranda of understanding and we've had an opportunity to exchange views and ideas on how to consolidate and deepen the bilateral relations between our two countries. And we have underlined this with a commitment to make our bilateral relations work much more better with Spain having a very great desire that South Africa should be a great ally and a friend just beyond even trade issues as it has manifested itself in a number of ways where we've been dealing with each other. I'm pleased to indicate that we've held in-depth discussions Yes, on trade and investment issues between our two countries and have had the opportunity to look very closely at the areas where our two countries deal with each other. Trade between our two countries has been growing and we are both great producers on citrus with Spain being the largest citrus producer and South Africa being the second and we both appreciated the role that we play in this sector of the agricultural <coughs> landscape and we also raised issues that we see impeding our trade uh, dealings particularly in relation to Europe and we asked President Sanchez and his delegation to have these matters raised because we would like to see solutions with regard to ensuring that our citrus does get through to European countries, particularly in view of the fact that a number of citrus producers, we see a number of black citrus producers coming through and as we are committed to inclusive growth in our country where all citizens of our country should participate meaningfully in the economy of our country would like to promote more and more of our black people participating in this sector and we do not want to see a situation where as they start to participate there are restrictions and blockages and impediments in their way. Citrus industry employs well over 130,000 people in our country and Europe is an important market for us and would like to see solutions being brought to bear on some of the challenges. I'm pleased that in our discussions with uh, President Sanchez and his delegation. There is a commitment to address this matter and uh, find solutions and that is what has underpinned the discussions between us. Later today, President Sanchez and I will engage with business leaders from Spain and South Africa at a business forum. South Africa is greatly encouraged by Spain's interests 
and investment in sectors that are key to the development and growth of our country. It is only through collaboration, which both of us underlined and underpinned, as well as foreign direct investment and a growing trade that we can overcome the challenges that we face as South Africa, which is poverty, inequality, and unemployment. We also had an opportunity to discuss issues of regional and international importance. South Africa and Spain are fully committed to preserving and strengthening the rules-based multilateral system as the primary instrument for the resolution of conflicts. And in fact, we both underlined a very important aspect that is common between the two countries, that we support the bringing about of solutions to conflict through discussion and peaceful methods and collaboration. We pledge to work together to achieve a prosperous, secure, and peaceful future for those areas on our respective continents that are facing instability and conflict. With less than a month to go before the 2022nd United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP27, which will be held in Egypt, we discussed avenues for collaboration as part of the global response to combat climate change. We also had an opportunity to discuss the agreement that was reached at COP26 and uh, reiterated our commitment as South Africa that it should go ahead and be implemented. We, however, raised the issue of the funding and that the funding needs to be recalibrated as to enable us as South Africa to be able to embark on the transition much more effectively. South Africa and Spain agree that climate change, the loss of biological diversity and other environmental challenges must be addressed within the context of sustainable development, particularly for those who are in areas that are vulnerable and will be negatively affected by the transition that we foresee. An important part of our collective responses to climate change is increased support for green, sustainable energy policies and technology. Now, several Spanish companies are active in South Africa, particularly in the renewable space, and we want to see such investments expanded. This is a call that I'll be making at the Business Forum later today when we meet business people from both sides. We welcome Spain's interest in collaborating on our national effort to achieve a just transition and a low carbon climate change resilient economy and society. President Sanchez and I reaffirmed the bonds of friendship and solidarity that exists between our two nations. We took time to express our gratitude to Spain for the support that they demonstrated in providing financial resources to COVAX during the height of the pandemic. COVAX, which was a facility and funding facility that was set up to fund the acquisition of vaccines for developing world countries. We also took time to thank Spain for making up to 60 million doses of vaccines available, especially to African countries. We were also able to express our gratitude for Spain's support to the initiative that India and South Africa had put forward to the World Trading Organization with regard to the waiver of the TRIPS <coughs> regulation. 
and we look forward to a continued engagement uh, between Spain and South Africa on a number of other areas. We believe that our relationship with Spain is firm and it can only grow better and stronger as we continue with our engagements. And of course, the small print in that agreement that we've signed on sport was also to remind, to remind Spain that we enabled Spain to win the 2010 uh, FIFA World Cup <laughs> and uh, in every uh, support that they can offer they must also remember that we were very very kind to them and they became world champions. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Oh, I can tell you, all, all Spaniards, we remember the goal that Andres Iniesta um, made in, in that uh, very important uh, final for uh, the history of the uh, Spanish soccer uh, national team. Uh, allow me to uh, intervene in Spanish. Uh, buenas tardes. Uh, comparezco. Um, para dar cuenta de esta gira que me ha llevado a visitar eh, en dos días eh, Kenia y Sudáfrica. Como saben eh, muchos de los medios de comunicación españoles que nos acompañan, esta es la primera visita oficial de un presidente de gobierno de España a dos países eh, fundamentales en nuestra visión para África, un continente con una importancia geoestratégica creciente y clave en la acción exterior de, de nuestro país. España quiere establecer eh, sólidas alianzas con los países africanos para hacer frente juntos a los retos que tenemos. Economic, geographical, big opportunities for the and for the human is as well uh, it, it, it export of stability. This uh, puts South Africa in in a, in a point uh, special. For, uh, for Africa 2023, Africa, South Africa is an anchor country with a bilateral All the hospitality and thanks to Mr. Ramaphosa and all the discussion that we had, there are a lot of opportunity in different sectors to uh, strong our uh, our context in the invasion of Russia to to Ukraine, recuperation of the, the, the economic of our bad COVID. Uh, South Africa, Spain, a uh, good uh, role is based in 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 rule and human human right, and that vision uh, shared is a, a base. We will add bilateral cooperation in the case the cotton 27 that is going to be going to be in Egypt. And, and, Indon and Indonesia in the next week there is a declaration to push our declaration in se several points. Um, um, uh, both societies, both nations, according the con the, con the consultation national as well, we sign mem 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 memos for 
eh, eh, co este co commercial relationship, Mr. Ramaphosa said we're going to, to, to share an important forum, eh, Pan, Pan African, eh, and share our enterprises to, to keep our companies in South Africa. I told to Mr. Ramaphosa, Re, re, sustain, sustain, sustainable energy, water, to invest in our, in our country, in this country. We are, we are, we are going to put in this country the next five years 215 billion with, with objective to implement the, the Spanish companies in in the Af in the African sector in between a, a public ent ent enterprise que, que, que cofine co in, in South Africa to, co to cooperate both both together I, I would like it, it as well to trans to translate the, the, the invitation to Mr. Maposa when he, he can have a point in the, in the it, it agenda to, to visit us. I would like to finish with an emphasis on the investigations, research, the scientific uh, people in, in, South, in South Africa, all these characteristics in Eastern Africa, I, I had a very one one wonderful impression, the scientific, several areas and universities in the country, in South Africa, they are giving important points to extend all, all this in several African countries for research and Spanish research to expand in in the rest of the uh, African con continent, well, in the all the, an increase of the four percent to con to continue to uh, to to work in in research and education. I would like a uh, fin finally. To this, this afternoon, that I would like to, to, to visit one of the most important monuments in Constitution, Constitution Hill in Johannesburg. I would like to tribute, tribute, tribute fighting for liberty. Is very great, great grateful. Is um, is a, 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 a democratic thought to uh, inspire the whole the whole world, Mr. Mr. President. South, South Africa is a is a political space to call, to call, to call, to collaborate between the researchers and the the command the community. I think we like to talk uh, positive the bil bil bilateral uh, speaking between Africa, South Africa, and Spain. Thank you. Thank you. Kindly introduce yourself. Thank you very much. And start. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eh, Ángel Carreira de Antena 3 Noticias. Tengo, un, tengo una pregunta para ambos. Como han comentado en sus comparecencias, en unos días volverán a coincidir en la cumbre del G20 en Bali. Nos gustaría saber si les consta la presencia del presidente ruso a esa cumbre y si esa presencia fuera así, esto pudiera ser un buen momento, una oportunidad para buscar un acercamiento en, en, en la guerra, en la invasión de Ucrania. Y una pregunta para el presidente Sánchez eh, sobre la comprometida reforma del delito de sedición. A usted no sabemos si le consta que el Partido Popular haya puesto como condición 
eh, para renovar ese consejo, que no se reforme el delito de sedición y si es así, si se mantiene ese compromiso de reformar el delito en el Código Penal. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias Ángel por, por eh, sus preguntas en relación con la primera. necessity of greater help to confront the economic consequences, the economic and social and now current economy and Spain. One thing is the legislative age, age, the agenda, all the popular party was very fluid and on these three three years and another another thing is the is the, the const, constitutional that is the in 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 a crisis constitutional crisis for year block block blockaded of every the, the, the democracy and the the judicial power. So when we call our oblig to obligations, what well, I can say is the, the, the agreement, it is, it is re ready, it is, we have to, all the parla parliamentary group, we, yes, or we don't want to, re to, re to renew the Spanish gap government. We say sí, we say yes in a strong way. from Spain, more specifically be, because it seems as if our country is actually headed that way. So what lessons can you learn? Thank you. <laughs> well, Always. I can say that. Sorry, oh. Mr. President. Sorry, another one. Sorry, Vincent. Just on the citrus, I forgot that. Um, so um, just between the two countries, what were your discussions about the protectionist tendencies that are hurting our agriculture, specifically in the citrus sector? Thank you. Thank you. Well, on the issue of collisions, um, there is a lot that we can learn from the various countries that have been well steeped in democratic parliamentary systems over a long time than we have. And so Spain and a number of countries have 
a lot of lessons that they can offer us and we can also learn from the very positive things they've done and their mistakes. So as we also traverse our way through managing co collisions, uh, we are also learning from our own errors and our own positive steps. And so let, let democracy be at play, but it's also underpinned by the rule of law. Uh, in a number of cases, uh, some of the initiatives or interventions that have been embarked upon have been subjected to our uh, law processes, our constitutional processes. Some of them have been deemed unconstitutional and in, invalid, and uh, we abide by that, uh, confirming that South Africa is not only underpinned by human rights, but also by the rule of law. So as we traverse this journey, we are learning uh, from others as well as learning from ourselves. And as you may recall, when we, draft, we drafted our own constitution, we took time to learn from the constitutions of many countries around the world. And uh, some of the provisions we have in our own constitutions were learned from other countries. When it comes to the issue that we discussed and raised with uh, uh, President Sanchez, we, we also raised the issue, as you correctly say, of uh, uh, the citrus issue as well as the restrictions that uh, we see are being imposed so as to impede trade. And uh, what we got uh, from Spain is a very open-minded uh, type of approach that uh, this matter needs to be discussed so that we find solutions. And that is what we appreciate. We did not uh, find a roadblock or a wall. Uh, we found a very, very uh, positive type of response, uh, which uh, President Sanchez was able to put to me, which in many ways will go a long way in strengthening our own relationship. Because as I said in my initial input, we have almost 130,000 workers in employed in the citrus uh, in, and related industries, our sector, and uh, we, uh, these restrictions are putting those jobs in danger. And they're also putting in danger our own transformation process where we see more and more black people, women and men, getting into the citrus industry, growing trees and producing fruit to be exported to other countries. We want to continue on that transformation path. Uh, we've been exporting citrus for more than a hundred years in South Africa, and we've entered a new era where new players have come to the fore. As our production increases, as we seek to broaden our markets, and uh, the last thing we want is to see re restrictions that are based on measures that can be um, looked at and resolved. So the positive approach that we've had is very, very comforting to us as uh, we will seek to find solutions to all these. Thank you. Don't Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'm informed that there is a challenge with the translation. would like to request the Ambassador again to assist us uh, before we kick off the second question. If you could please assist us with the translation. Um, okay, carry, thank you. Carry on. Second question from Spain. Um, if I can please see a hand. Thank you. Hello. Hello, my name is uh, Iñaki Aguado from Informativos Telecinco in Spain. Thank you for hosting us today. Eh, buenas tardes a los dos. En primer lugar, tengo una pregunta para ambos. Me gustaría saber si consideran que la presencia, que bueno, que la Unión Europea está perdiendo cierta influencia en el continente africano frente a la influencia que pueda estar ganando países como China o Rusia. Me gustaría saber si han hecho ese análisis y si lo pueden compartir con nosotros. Y en segundo lugar, tengo unas cuestiones, algunas cuestiones económicas para 
del presidente Sánchez. Hoy se han conocido los datos de la EPA. Se ve una ralentización, de, eh, se ralentiza la creación del empleo y, se, y me gustaría saber si el presidente Sánchez ve indicadores de cambio de situación, cuál es su análisis al respecto. Y por otro lado, eh, me gustaría saber si sigue siendo optimista sobre el crecimiento económico de España en 2022 y de cara también a 2023 o si empieza a considerar que puede haber un cierto riesgo de recesión. Y finalmente el Banco Central Europeo va a volver a anunciar una subida importante de tipos. ¿Qué cree que debe hacer la banca? El...
actress into the EU. Has South Africa agreed that those additional measures are necessary or have you changed your position on whether they are necessary? Thank you. It was uh, quite unfortunate that uh, the U.S. government uh, issued that type of warning without having had uh, deep dive type of discussions uh, with us. But following that, we were able to engage them and to get to understand precisely where this warning or information has come from. We are in the course of doing precisely that because warnings such as those do send a lot of panic uh, amongst our people and South Africans should be best informed by the South African government. Our agencies, as they are getting better at uh, their job of securing our people, are alert and are looking very closely at this type of threat, and they continue to do so. So any form of alert will come from the government of the Republic of South Africa, and it is unfortunate that uh, another government should issue such a threat as to send panic amongst our people. So the South African government is working around the clock to verify and to look very closely at this uh, message that came from the United States. Thank you. Thank you. A quick uh, response, I would say that the, the good news uh, from this uh, bilateral uh, meeting that we had idea that I would like to share with the, of course, the, the public opinion, no? which is that we are going to work together uh, also at, in Brussels uh, in order to, to find solutions to this uh, situation. I'd like to add on that and say we, we did raise this issue with the President of the European Union, uh, Mr. Charles Michel, when he was here. And we've raised it once again with President Sanchez. And we appreciate the approach that Spain is taking on this matter because it's important that Europe should relate to African countries and also to our country, South Africa, on an equal basis. It should never be a paternalistic relationship it should be a relationship of equals, but also a relationship that is based on our historical understanding of what happened in the past. We cannot wash away what happened in the past, the way that African countries were disempowered through a colonial system that held them back from their own economic development. We are now at a stage where we are seeking ourselves to develop our economies. And the last thing that we want that is needed is for us to be held back by strictures, by rules that don't really have a robust scientific bearing. And it is in this regard that we are raising some of these restrictions that are being put forward and saying they are restricting trade, but more than that, they are actually devastating the livelihoods of many people, not only in South Africa, but on our continent. And we would like, on a very sort of friendly basis, uh, with good understanding between countries, that these matters should be taken seriously. And for us, time is of the essence. And we've seen slowness in dealing with these matters. And we want to reiterate that time is of the essence because many of our people are unemployed, they are poor, and there's a great deal of inequality. And these are challenges that 
the northern countries and west or European countries must support us in addressing these because they in part did play a role in disempowering many countries on our continent. So let's work together and it is for that reason that I really appreciate the approach that uh, President Sanchez has taken on this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, last round of questions. Sophie? Um, after you, Sophie, I'll take one question from Spain and then that will be a wrap. Eh, thank you. I'm Raúl Peña from El Mundo Newspaper. Eh, tenía dos preguntas para el Presidente Sánchez. Why is not signed yet? It can you can ensure in the next judicial uh, uh, position, the position party, the PP llevar al Congreso el Gobierno. Quería preguntarle cuál es la propuesta que va a llevar el el Gobierno al Congreso sobre la reforma del Código Penal, qué plazos maneja para llevarla y si la va a llevar a la mesa de diálogo que tiene previsto reunirse antes de que finalice el año. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Eh, en relación con la primera de las preguntas, eh, simplemente una, una matización. Me ha dicho un, un candidatos que nunca jamás hayan estado en... Que no hayan desempeñado the candidate that they never really that in that position. First, with the judicial power, yesterday I had in an encounter with just, just now we are very, very close to get to into an, 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 an agreement. It's a very useful news to get an, an, an agreement, to get a position, a balanced uh, position for the popular party and the, gov and the government of, 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 Spain, of Spain to comply with the constitutional power to put a, cost, a constitutional uh, the crisis with the, 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 the division of the, with the further um, uh, press president of the judicial constitution. We can dis discuss about the page of the, gov of the government. In my speech, that is the mock este the este, este, este democracy to be in favor to be este, este against and the uh, to to comply with the constitution all we can de de block this 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 situation uh, for the good of our country and and democracy the second question in many occasions, Spanish government cons consider first the situation in, in, Catal in, Cat in Catalonia is much better than in October 2017. The, 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 the political crisis in 40 years of, the, of, the, of democracy must be res resolved in the, in the, for political causes and and from 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 there one of one of the first lessons that we have learned is in 2017 is the the the, the necessity to the European con context that we de we develop and also will belong to that, and that is what the government of Spain it is it is doing. Thank you very, very much, Sophie. My question is that to the two leaders. You spoke, Mr. President, about what happened yesterday in relation to the United States of America. When you look at the Sahel region, 
uh, there's a serious challenge in terms of the insurgents and you go down south, uh, Cabo Delgado. Did you discuss the current problem of a growing number of these groups in terms of fighting terror? And then the second question, uh, the, the issue of COP27, you spoke about funding, Mr. President, or financing. What are the sticking points? And then finally, the issue of Africans perishing in the Mediterranean uh, Sea, trying to cross to Europe. Uh, countries such as Italy and Spain, you receive a lot of migrants from the continent and they are being abused, harassed. We saw what happened in June in Morocco. Many died. What are you doing about this? Well, I, I completely agree that uh, migration is a, a common challenge that we, Africa and Europe, we are facing. Uh, first, I think that we need to uh, uh, to address uh, the issue of uh, smugglers and human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Second, I would say that Spain is one um, of the countries that are uh, developing uh, circular, regular migration. Mm -hmm. So we don't see uh, migration as a threat, but as an opportunity uh, for the development of uh, the country of origin, but of mm -hmm. course, uh, the country that receive that migration. In the case of Spain, we receive a lot of migration from Africa, but especially from Central America and South America. Mm -hmm. Because we have, you know, we share the same language, uh, more or less the same culture. And, and lastly, I would say that it's important to uh, cooperate with the countries of origin and the countries of transit of that migration. This is what we are doing with uh, Algeria, with Morocco, with Mauritania. Uh, and of course, we are uh, increasing our cooperation and collaboration with countries of origin, for instance, in, in the case of Spain, mainly uh, sub-Saharan countries, the Sahel mainly, Mali especially. Um, so, you know, I think it's, uh, it's important to see all the multidimensional uh, um, I would say perspectives of, of uh, the migration uh, issue and, uh, and to have a humanistic approach, which I think is it's, uh, it's important. No, I, I was uh, remembering when you were um, asking this question that Spain, uh, during the civil war back in the 30s of last century and over 40 years that we suffered dictatorship, many of our uh, uh, citizens uh, left Spain and, and went to South America or Central America. Some of them went to Algeria mm -hmm. or even, of course, uh, to many countries in Europe. So in a way, I think that that heritage, that history also uh, means that the Spanish society in, I would say, in a major percentage is very open uh, to accept migration and to integrate migration uh, in uh, in our society or within our society. Oh. Thank you. Uh, we did speak about uh, the issue of uh, insecurity around the world, especially on our continent, and we did zero it down to the conflict that's happening in the northern part of Mozambique, in Cabo Delgado, and we appreciated the focus that uh, a number of countries that have been coming to the assistance of Mozambique are doing, and Spain is one of those that has uh, offered assistance, a form of training, and we outlined to uh, the president that uh, South Africa, we have put boots on the soil, on the ground, and uh, together with other countries in SADC, we are assisting uh, Mozambique on the basis of uh, our common solidarity in SADC, and uh, we are pushing those groups back. And of course, there's still a lot more that needs to be done to ensure that there is full peace and security, and that is our main objective. And I 
very much also appreciated uh, the message from President Sanchez in relation to that, that in the end we should also seek to find solutions through collaboration, through discussions, so that uh, we can secure uh, the peace. In relation to COP27, yes, there is uh, uh, an offer that has been put on the table, and uh, as we raise uh, the issue of uh, the, the financing, we are also raising the adequacy of that financing and also the composition of that financing. And so we are going to be having discussions with our partners in this regard in a very positive manner to see how best uh, we can navigate our way through the just transition so that we don't leave anyone behind and particularly uh, the vulnerable communities that are going to be negatively affected as we transit from one source of coal to another. So we are going to have interesting discussions as we go to COP27. Just to comment very briefly on the issue of migration, and I couldn't agree uh, with President Sanchez more to say that we should also see the issue of migration as an opportunity, an opportunity where uh, the contributing countries can be supported. Uh, and the one issue that we have often raised, uh, which is another dynamic in this whole situation, is that sanctions that have been applied to various countries, and especially on our continent, sanctions applied, for instance, to Zimbabwe, are having a negative impact, not only on Zimbabwe's economy, but also in a, on a number of countries in SADC. They are also having a negative impact on us, because as the sanctions weaken the Zimbabwean economy, Zimbabweans then tend to migrate mm -hmm. and leave and come to our own country and other countries uh, in the sub-region. They, they flow to Botswana, they flow to South Africa, to Namibia, and then they exert enormous pressure on us. Uh, like you, we've always been, as South Africans, been very open mm. to the inflow of people from various parts of the continent. But with economic challenges that our people are now facing through unemployment inequality, the pressure becomes even greater. And we become concerned when countries that are applying sanctions continue to do so to weaken those countries that are contributing migrants to other countries are disinterested and actually don't even seem to care what uh, the impact is because they are targeting certain either individuals or certain countries and the impact is much broader than that. And we are saying those sanctions should be lifted and we should be able to bolster the economies of those countries so that the people can have less of an incentive to leave their countries to go to other countries because their countries' economies will be growing. So once again, we call on the various countries that have applied sanctions, particularly on Zimbabwe, to lift those sanctions so that the economy of Zimbabwe can get back on its feet and they can be the economy that they used to be. And in that way, Zimbabweans who have left Zimbabwe will find great incentive to go back and to lead normal lives in their own country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Excellencies, you may take leave of us. Thank you. Wonderful.